Hello crafty friends, welcome to another episode in our No Regrets series. Today we're going to be using some patterned paper scraps to make a collage mast board. And the idea is to use as many scraps as possible to get them out of your stash and onto your cards. So a collage mast board is a piece of mixed media made from collaging as you might expect but that you can cut down into smaller pieces to use on various projects so as my base i'm going to use some mixed media paper and i've chosen mixed media paper because it's a very robust paper and it will handle pretty much anything i choose to throw at it and to stick down all my pieces of pattern paper i'm going to use liquitex matte gel medium it's matte, so dries clear with a matte finish, and it also dries non-sticky, so it's great if you're going to put something in a scrapbook or a journal, but we're making cards today. So the first thing I'm going to do is rip up and create a pile of scraps with nice torn borders, and I've chosen my pink and peach scraps today so that everything is coordinated you can obviously tear your scraps up to whatever size you want you can have a few big ones or lots of little ones i don't think i want the cat themed paper but i'll throw in some of this dark paper this one's a bit more of an orangey tone but we've got pinks and peaches so it'll work and it'll add a bit of variation same with this one here so now i've got a lovely pile of scraps i'm going to use a paintbrush to paint the medium the gel medium onto my bit of mixed media paper and i can add more go over the top And I can work my way around the paper until it's completely covered. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to make a card for you and show you a bunch of other cards that I've made with this collage masterboard. So do stick around for that. If you wanted to you could mix in some other papers you could use old book pages you could use found papers things from magazines bits of junk mail correspondence you could use bits of mixed media that you've created yourself if you can hear some strange flapping noises in the background it's just pigeons outside in the garden it's that time of year where the male pigeons challenge each other to wing flapping fights so with all these scraps my main aim is to distribute them all over the page have a bit of each of the papers in say the four four quadrants as it were to create variation and interest and spread out the colour and the pattern. So for example, I've got multiple bits of this darker one and I'm putting them fairly well spaced out so that if later I cut this down, which I will do, so it's not an if, it's a when, when I cut this down, there'll be some of this darker paper everywhere and I'll be able to capture it with whatever I'm cutting it out with. So if you've got pieces that appear to have some sort of directional pattern you might want to think about whether you want to have them all going in the same direction across your masterboard. So with this aligned paper I'm having the lines go horizontal and with this butterfly paper I'm again having the rows of butterflies horizontal but all the other ones it doesn't seem to really matter which way up I put them similarly with this one with the chevrons on the chevrons are all 
going in a horizontal direction. So I just realised I've only got one piece of this paper on there and I rather like it so whoops, I think I will add a couple more bits here and there. And now this is mostly full, what I want to do is just go around and make sure I've got all the white paper covered up. So now my master board is ready to be left to dry. I'm going to make sure I clean that matte gel medium off of my paintbrush really well because I don't want that to ruin the brush. Ordinarily I would leave this to dry perhaps overnight but for the purposes of making a video I've given it a blast with my hairdryer and I'm just chopping off the overhang. It doesn't have to be neat and tidy really. I'm just being fastidious is that the word might be the word so the matte gel medium kind of seals this to protect the paper as well as glue it all down but i'm also going to go over it with a coat of clear gesso because i want to put some other things on top but i don't really want those other things soaking into the paper or making the paper buckle so to seal it in and prime it for the next phase, I'm going to give it a nice coat of clear gesso. And this is the Dina Wakely clear gesso. And it's really nice because it is very, very smooth. It's got virtually no tooth at all. Some of the other clear gessos you buy are quite gritty. And that affects the texture of whatever you put on top. And I, I just want this to be nice and smooth. And again, I'm going to make sure my paintbrush gets a good clean to get that gesso off because I don't want it drying on the brush. And I'm going to give my masterboard a good old dry with my hairdryer. Now that's mostly dry and I've chopped it into four pieces so that I can do some different things on each one. You can obviously leave it exactly as it is. You could use that as a background or you could die cut some shapes from it. I'm going to tweak them a little bit. So I've got some Deco Art Crafters acrylic in white here. I pop a little bit on my glass mat, get my paintbrush and make sure it's dry because I want to do a dry brushing technique and that's where you don't have much paint on your paintbrush. Just a small amount. So I'm going to dip it in my paint, brush it off on my palette and then flick in from the sides and sometimes flick back out again. And what this is gonna do is it's going to grab onto all the texture to the edges, but it's gonna harmonize everything. It's gonna bring all the layers together or push all the layers of card patterned paper into the background. It marries everything together and you also get some nice texture from the brush brush strokes that were made in the matte gel medium and in the gesso that went on top. So you can push back your pattern, your colour, you can tone it down or marry it together with a bit of white acrylic or you can pick any other colour you like. You could pick a peach or maybe a little bit of green or a bit of everything and just dry brush here and there. Another thing you can do with the white acrylic is load up a brayer. You don't want it too thick, you just want a, a thin coating on your brayer. And then you can roll it across your master board. You can come in from different directions and it has a similar effect to the dry brushing but it's subtly different in that the raised portions will grab the paint from the brayer and anything that's kind of recessed will not get any paint on it. I think that's what I meant. Make sure you clean your brayer before you do anything else. And another thing you can do on top of your collage masterboard is stencil. So I'm gonna get some white acrylic again and use a sponge dauber. The trick with this is to not overload your dauber. So load it with ink and then kind of squish it out on the mat or your palette or whatever you're using. And then just gently 
go over your stencil. You can always go and pick up a bit more. When you've finished, put that straight in some water and then that will be wash outable. And there you have a nice light stencil pattern on top of that. So some of the colour and pattern is still coming through, but it's again kind of married together and muted slightly. And for my final piece, just something a little bit different, I'm going to use some saltwater taffy distress oxide, which is a, a kind of corally peachy colour, which should go nicely with this. And the edges of the torn bits of paper should pick that up. And you can do some areas heavier than others and some very light. So that's harmonised that as well. It's brought all those different pieces of paper together by going over it with a bit of Distress Oxide. And so the next thing I'm going to do with my little panels here is I'm going to take this stamp. Now this is a sort of bubble wrap type stamp. You could just use bubble wrap and pick up some ink and put it on. So this is quite orange at the moment. This is Bellini, but it will mute down slightly. When you stamp down, go over the joins between the bits of paper and that will make it all come together again. So you might have seen my updated smusher video. This is the one I made and it is made from bubble wrap. So I've added some, which one was this? do si -Do dye ink and squirted on a bit of water and I can pick that up with bubble wrap and add that across my panel to harmonise everything. And yet another thing you can add is some luster wax or gilding wax. This is Sizzix luster wax in rose gold. And get a bit on my finger, smush it on my mat so I'm not over, over applying it. And then go around the edges of your bits of paper. You don't have to do all of them. But you can add a nice luster and you get lots of texture from the brush strokes and what one was this was this was yeah this was the dry brushing wasn't it not the bray ring i think that was the bray ring so yeah there's lots of brush strokes there for the luster wax to pick up and you can go around the edge and if you die cut from this you can obviously reapply the luster wax around the edge of whatever you die cut. Now you can heat emboss on this, say you wanted to stamp some text or an image and heat emboss it, but you do need to make sure it's really dry and go over it with your anti-static powder tool so that you don't get powder sticking where you don't want it. But I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine with a dry embossing folder. So I'm just gonna use this swirly whirly one. So that's now got a swirly whirly pattern on it that will bring everything together. And as you've seen me do before, you can buff the raised areas to remove some of the colour, the paint, the pattern to help those raised areas stand out. Because we've coated this in matte gel medium and clear gesso and white paint. You might have to put some elbow grease into it. You might find you're better off using some fine grain sandpaper. But again, you could bring in your luster wax if you wanted to and go over the raised image a bit. You don't have to do it over the whole panel again. You could just pick a few areas where you felt there wasn't much pattern and add your wax there, like that. 
So as promised, I'm going to make a card for you. I've got a four by six inch card blank here with a panel stuck on top that's probably about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. And this is the quarter that I'm going to use for this card. It's the next day now, so this has dried overnight, so it's really, really dry. And I'm going to use this frame die. It cuts out a stitched frame and the square in the middle. And I want to capture some of the interesting parts of this. So I've got some butterflies here, some leaves and uh, little seed heads, and then a bit of a flower with the associated leaves. So I think I'll go for that part and I will take that down and then cut that out. So I'm going to cut this with my Gemini Mini. I'm going to add a shim because I'm trying to cut through several layers of paper and a shim will help and I'll also run this through a couple of times. So I'll take the die off and as you can see from the back it hasn't quite cut through that's because it's just such a thick piece of card but I can use scissors or a craft knife to cut along the indentation that the die has made and that's just going to snip through the last couple of layers of paper and I don't actually want the middle piece separate from the frame I want it as one piece so that's absolutely fine but if I did want to separate them I could just get a craft knife and carefully run it along the line there even though this is quite a thick bit of card I'd like to give it a bit of extra dimension but I don't want a full height of craft foam behind it so I'm just going to take maybe two pieces of card and glue that on the back just to give it a bit of lift. And now I can add some glue to the back and get that stuck on my card. And I use my T-square ruler so that I can make sure it is square roughly central and i want it the right way up so those butterflies are flying upwards the next thing i'm going to do is add this heart frame on top i've cut it using this die from gold cardstock and this is just gonna bring in a bit of shimmer and shine and create more of a focal point. To glue the back of this, I'm gonna use my glue dauber and pick up some of my high tack glue and just daub it onto the back. And that should add just enough glue so that when I add it on here, it won't splurge out everywhere. And I want that central as well. For my sentiment, I've used this It's Your Day stamp and stamped it in black and then cut it using the coordinating die from Smooth White Cardstock. And I've cut a couple of extras so that I can stack those, one on top of the other, and then stack the sentiment on top. And that gives that a bit of dimension as well, but not as much as if I put craft foam underneath. And that can then be stuck on top of my focal point. And I'm going to pop that right in the middle there, I think. And for a little bit of something extra, I'm going to add some white Nouveau drops. Just a few dotted around on the focal point. This brings in a bit more gloss, a bit more shape and a bit more texture. And that's that card finished. It's very simple and it was very quick and easy to do once the collage board was all made up. And that's the thing about using something like a collage master board. You put the energy and the time and the effort into making the board. And then you can just use some very simple dies, very simple stamps, and something like a bit of gold cardstock to really zhuzh up the card. So making a collage masterboard is something fun that you can do when you've got the time and the energy and then you can, once they're dry, put them away in your stash and like any pattern paper, say, you can just pull it out, die cut from it and uh, you're good to go. So that's card number one, It's Your Day. 
and then these two cards I made using a swooping banner die so I cut all these banners from one quarter of my collage masterboard and then added them in a diagonal one on a portrait one on a landscape and both of them got a gold vellum backed butterfly and a pre-made sentiment and to add a bit of energy and vibrancy I put some wonky circles on cut from the same gold foil cardstock so there's another two cards so this card I made from another quarter I die cut the word high and then I heat embossed it with clear embossing powder and I did three layers so that it's nice and glossy and has got a bit of a dimension to it and I popped it on a panel of cardstock that I'd embossed with a hexagon embossing folder and then I cut some hexagons from gold foil cardstock and dotted those around for shimmer and shine and energy. This card I made from another one of the quarters, it was the one I ran through the embossing folder and I just took half of it, put it on a card and then layered on this die cut panel, added a gold foiled ferny frond and another sentiment and I really like the way this one turned out. I do love this curve and the curves that are in here and just the little bits of colour and pattern that are peeking out from behind. And then this was the last card that I made and I made it from the other half of this bit here. I cut three circles using a stitched circle die and then I cut a panel and I don't know if you can see on there, you might be able to see in the close-ups, but I scored three parallel lines down my panel and then added my card straight on, added gold foil flower and a celebrate today. So out of my messy mixed media collage masterboard, I got six clean and simple cards. I have actually got a few pieces left so I could probably get maybe two or three more cards out of them. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and that it's given you some ideas of what to do with some of the papers, the pattern papers in your stash. If it has, please do consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell. I think I've got at least one more pattern paper topic in my mind so do come back for that i think that will be my next video right thanks for watching and i'll see you very soon bye for now